Welcome to Civ 6 Civilization Spotlight, featuring Canada, the Nautilus of the North. I recently made a Reddit post uh, about why Canada is not included in Civ 5 or Civ 6 as an actual official civilization, because I, I didn't know why they've just never been in there. I guess my main reason for confusion is like, uh, recognized by United States, there's 16 first world nations and 5 out of 16 have not been included in any civilization game and one of them is Canada. Um, but I got some really good responses back from other people, and it basically boiled down to actually never being a civilization. Canada, for most of its time, has been a British colony, and they're still influenced by the royal family overseas, to, to, like right now. On top of this, Canada has just had its 150th anniversary, so it's relatively young compared to other nations. But, this also brought up controversy about Australia because it also has similar parameters to Canada, uh, it being a young country and it's also a British colony. So it was up for debate really. I couldn't really see any actual video for Canada on Civ 6, like on YouTube at all. Um, it's just people playing like England or United States and settling in North America and being like playing really nice to other people. That, that was their, I, I don't know. Uh, today we're gonna take a look at JFD's Canada Civilization and we're gonna be able to look in depth and the components and factors that make successful and balanced Civ in Civilization VI. Links of course will all be available in the description and the other mods I'm using will also be listed below. For the most part, and probably one that catch your eye, I'm using Resourceful. Just adds a few extra resources here and there and a few luxuries. Uh, unfortunately I didn't get very many of them, but still there's, it's a, uh, it's, it gives you more depth in playing Civilization. I would recommend that mod if you are playing by yourself or with other people, it's, it's just it, yeah, way more fun. Canada's leader is Sir William Lloyd Mackenzie King, Prime Minister of Canada from 1926 to 1930 and from 1930 to 1948. He was most commonly known in history for being in office during the Great Depression of Canada this? and during World War II. Critics say King gradually altered Canada, a difficult country to govern, but he did it while keeping the nation united. Leader traits, volunteer spirit, may form corps and armies earlier than usual. Corps are 33% cheaper during wartime. We'll get into the flower class stuff later um, when we start talking about unique units, but for now let's focus on the core of this ability. I never form armies or core personally. Um, I feel it's a waste of power to combine two targets into one without actually doubling the attack power or defensive power. Um, if you don't know what core is, it's basically when you combine two, um, if you have two battleships side by side, you can combine, combine them into one unit, and it basically takes almost half the stats of one and adds it on, so it's just a little bit stronger. Um, but this ability also demonstrates historically the conscription compromise Mackenzie made for Canada, because he basically said men can fight to defend, he wouldn't ship any men overseas to fight. Um, and it was a lot cheaper to run um, the military during this time, especially after experiencing the Great Depression of Canada. From sea to sea to sea. Uh, purchase tiles 20% cheaper in coastal cities. Commercial hubs and industrial zone gain additional bonuses for being next to coast. This was a really good ability, I loved it. Um, I was getting a minimum of like plus four adjacency and plus five adjacency for industrial zones and it really paid off late game. It was a really strong ability, and especially on commercial hubs, to get an extra like 6 or 7 gold was just really strong. If you didn't know, Canada's motto is actually from C to C, so I really like what JFD did with like naming this ability. Makes a lot of sense. Canada has a lot of coastal cities, and a lot of them, especially after the Great Depression, there was an industrial boom, a lot of jobs and stuff like that. So World War II also helped the industrial boom, but basically there's a lot of historical relevance to actually putting commercial hubs or industrial zones besides the water. Commercial hubs are a little different because Canada is known for a lot of its trade, and a lot of its trade happens overseas. Only other trading partner Canada has is with, well, United States, and that's from border to border. You don't really need seas for that. But even trading with United States, I think 60% of the trading to the United States is still done through water. So it makes a lot of sense this uh, from sea to sea to sea. Flower class. Um, this is a replacement for the destroyer, and it actually comes in combustion, I mentioned earlier, which is a full tech before. Um, the flower class has a few unique attributes, which are really cool as well. Plus five combat strength versus submarines, and it transfers its movement to escorted units. An example would be a, a settler, uh, I believe has a movement of four on water. If you uh, link it with the um, flower class, you attach it and you make like an envoy with it, 
um, the escorted unit, which would be the settler, would gain the seven movement of the flower class. So it just it acts as an escort. Like it it should really be most units like this, but it makes sense for if a settler goes on a ship, the sh it should move the speed of the ship. Not the ship shouldn't be limited to the speed of the settler. So I like it doing that too. Mounty replaces cavalry. Weaker but cheaper maintenance. 62 strength versus 57 strength. Five gold versus four gold and it doesn't require horses either. No movement penalties for crossing rivers or hills in or beside Canada's borders. This unit was a lot of fun. Uh, late game when I was beating USA, if I ever started in my territory, I was literally able to fly across the continent and like attack it in one turn. The one gold per turn deduction versus a whole f minus five strength deficiency versus like the cavalry, it's really up to your opinion if this worth it for you or not. For me, I'm kind of on the fence, but I kind of like being able to like move really fast. Merchant Dockyard replaces Harbor. Plus one great merchant point per turn and plus one influence points per turn. This is all additional you know to the uh, actual like base uh, bonuses of the harbor and that that would include the plus one trade route plus one great rabble point i love this district i built it in every single city and it was extremely cheap and it was cheaper than all the other districts it took really a really fast time to build it too again this is related to what i said about the commercial hubs a lot of canada's trade comes through their comes through ports and stuff like that so this makes a lot of sense to have a great merchant point per turn for a harbor uh, so that uh, just sums up the actual civilization, the details and stuff like that. We're going to get into opinions and um, ratings for each stuff a little bit later, so we'll go into depth. But here's a quick strategy if you decide on playing Canada. So I clocked about five hours into this mod, and it was a lot of fun. I really liked it. I won the game you're watching in the background right now, as I usually do by domination, um, and never had a single problem the entire game. My favorite way for war is naval war. I love fighting people by sea, and it's personally it's the most interesting way to win a game of Civilization for me. So this means the Venetian Arsenal was a must for me, and it really gave me an edge when I was at war with like every country. I also never once lost gold, which I was surprised. Usually when I go to war, I'm like minus five, minus seven gold. I was always positive. I was always like gaining, you know, 50 to 300 gold for the entire game. Whether I was at war, or I was not. It. It was pretty good, and you know, the core bonus where you get the discount from having cores and stuff like that, 33%, you might not think it's worth it, and I, as I said, I don't build armies, I don't build cores, but when I put them together, and I had like the uh, military policy where it gave me plus two, uh, minus two gold maintenance per unit, it was saving me a lot of gold. I was making gold off, I was experiencing no amenity deficiency, no gold deficiency. I was able to go at war with everyone with like minimal war weariness, which is really nice. Let me put it this way. I knew I was gonna have a good time when the military roles of Canada and United States in my game were reversed. Normally in real life, I don't think that that would uh, hold up, but in this game, holy, I just clapped them. Um, some factors to relating to my victory I would like to acknowledge is that I was, believe I wasn't playing uh, deity. I may have been playing emperor. So I wasn't playing the hardest. Uh, I was also on an island on my own to start, which was really nice. I had no one to contest anything, um, any land or anything like that. So I was able to build up really quick without actually having to go and have any conflict with anybody. I also was in alliance with Rome for most of the time. Rome gave me a lot of luxuries. I didn't have like gold. Um, I didn't have any gold on my continent. Um, so huge shout out to my boy Rome. Uh, I still have to kill him in the end though. So, you know, we we'll get just no hard feelings. Now for my ratings and my opinions. The choice of leader was pretty good. Uh, from what I've read in like history and stuff like that, uh, Sir Johnny MacDonald was the first Prime Minister and Mackenzie King was a huge influence during World War II, uh, Borden as well, and Laurier. So those are the few that, you know, the ones that stick out to me the most. So I think Mackenzie was a pretty good pick for the role of actually being a leader in civilization. Uh, volunteer Spirit is referencing how conscription during, uh, like happened during World War II, but I found this actual ability not too strong. 33% reduction on naval corps and armies during wartime is good, but it's really situational. Uh, a lot of people when they play Canada, they're expecting to play peace, and that's you know it, any literally anybody but me, because I always go you know domination. But you know it probably you'll only ever use this one out of three times because I know a lot of people like me, like my friends, they don't form corps or armies either. They just go full in with their ships because it's it's more efficient. So 
it was good, but it, I would say only one out of three times will be using it when you play Canada. However, the second ability from C to C to C is phenomenal. I love this ability, and it completely makes up for the situational ability of Volunteer Spirit. Everyone will use this, like, one time again. Like, you'll use it in almost every city you have. It really pushes you forward to having coastal cities too. I must have purchased 40 tiles. I know, uh, I know you're not really supposed to purchase tiles, but when I settled a coastal city, and I have examples in the background, I was saving a good amount of gold. It probably saved me a thousand gold late game, like from accumulated purchases. It was really good. I actually really like that ability. So flower class is a unique unit. It's a it was a corvette used in World War II and it was an anti-submarine ship largely used by the Canadian fleet. So in the historical references, um, the bonuses towards the submarines make sense. Okay, it was an anti-submarine ship, so of course that's that's gonna make sense. And it's just flat out a better version of the destroyer. It has the same cost. It has the same like. Um, melee power and you can get it earlier through combustion it's not overly overpowered um and it was my go-to uh, naval unit mainly because i didn't have any other but all my enemies were shit so i actually never had to use this uh, submarine bonus because i don't think i ever had to face a submarine and it was pretty fun to go mach 9 when i had like a swordsman that i forgot to upgrade attached to it because as i said if you if you just weren't listening you get that escort bonus where you know you attach it and you get the speed of the corvette you actually don't have to go the speed of the actual unit okay second to last mounty i used it a lot uh, mainly, I kept making them for the focus of the video, but it started to grow on me. There were situations when I was missing the 5 attack bonus, I kind of wished I had it from the cavalry, but it moved so fast it was kind of worth it. Uh, the gold wasn't a huge factor for me, because as I said, I was making a lot of harbors and, and, and industrial and uh, commercial, sorry, commercial. So the gold wasn't really an issue, but the movement, I think, was pretty good. Um, and I again, I should have showed, or I will show again, uh, the post editing of me being able to move from one city and just go across to the other side of the continent and attack the other city in one turn again really good historical um reference like the the choice of the melee unit because it kind of still has mounties only the best officers the most honored um officers from either policing or military get to be the mounties in canada for some reason it requires like years of training but you get to become one of these highly trained cavalry units that canada has in the military uh, Merchant Dockyard. I loved it. I built it in every city and uh, you know it can, a lot of Canada's trade comes from overseas as I also said so it's a pretty much a must build in all cities when you're playing this mod. Okay now it comes down to the ratings. Historical representation I'd say 9 out of 10. I was really impressed by all these little histories uh, influences and you know references for all over Canada's civilization in this mod. The only reason I wouldn't give it a 10 out of 10 and again this is completely opinion because it was excellent um, was all the unique units, like the actual units, not the docker, you unlock late game, like industrial. Which, to be fair, is when Canada was a country, so, you know, that completely makes sense. But Canada's also known for being the world's center of trade and stuff like that. And again, I know a lot of this commercial hub and the harbor district, that, that all makes sense. Um, a, a unique trader unit for Canada or like a trading ability like Russia has where you get extra gold and whatever that maybe would be a little more relevant um, but then again the Mountie and flower class are really you know strong Canadian units as well so it kind of be you'd kind of lose something if you ended up switching a trader for one of them um, another thing what is Canada's known for its fur trade like the Hudson Bay Company um, maybe like extra gold from fur tr from the fur improvements or even getting two reserves for the price of one it's just a suggestion overall it was really really good historical representation i'd say 9 out of 10 if you're looking for you know history in a civ mod looks straight up 9 out of 10 it's a good looking civ i like the colors you know colors made sense it's red and white makes a lot of sense looks nice the bounty was actually textured in, it wasn't just like a block of like a random thing, it was it looked nice. And the model for uh, Mackenzie King looked pretty good too, it looked, I spent a lot of time doing that. Okay, power. Uh, this is rating 1 out of 10 is the weakest, 10 out of 10, this has nothing to do with the actual mod creation, it's just how I feel it's balanced throughout the game. Uh, like 3 out of 10 would be like America or something like that, and uh, 10 out of 10 would be like Australia or Germany, like really really almost overpowered. 
Um, so I just give it a 7 out of 10. Reason I don't believe it's the strongest or the weakest is um, it's balanced, but Canada also has a huge power spike once the industrial and modern era is reached. But before then, you're just literally making gold and like building industrial zones, getting ready to unlock the units for late game. Um, it would be important, I think, to play the way as I did and make allies in the early game, but go your own way once you're leading in science, you have gold and production to prepare for any action you wish to do. Personal enjoyment, you already know I'm giving this 10 out of 10. I spent like 5 hours of my life doing this. I got an essay tomorrow, I'm, I'm literally gonna be playing this whenever I play online with my friends. Excellent stability, and it's definitely one of the more fun and unique mods I've had the pleasure of playing. So that's it. A mod review by Canada by GFD. I would really appreciate any feedback or suggestions on what mods to do next. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this video too. As I said, I recorded six hours. Script writing took like an hour, and recording the audio took about another half an hour. Editing the actual video will take three or four hours. So these videos aren't coming out often, uh, but when they come out, I assure you, it's top quality. So who's next? You can decide. Uh, just leave a comment suggesting another mod. I the normal sieves, everyone has the normal sieves. This is mod review series, okay? So please leave a mod that you would like me to suggest. I'll do the same thing, history, relevance, uh, looks, power, personal enjoyment, everything, a full look over the mod, and of course give credit to the person who suggested it in the beginning of the video, and give credit to the mod creator, of course. It'll take some time before I make my next video, like solid two months, guarantee there's not gonna be anything up here, but I'm a busy man. I got university to look forward to, I got essays as I said so uh, so that's it that's good night from me I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, uh, yeah uh, good night